An app without data is really just a user interface. Core Data is Apple's framework for persisting data on all of Apple's platforms, including iOS. So in this video, I wanna show you how to use Core Data to persist data in your iOS applications. There's an existing application here that I want us to add Core Data to in a moment, but first, I'm gonna show you how to add Core Data to a new project when you set a project up. So if I create a new project here, and I'll just make it a single view application, if we look down at these checkboxes at the bottom here, we can choose to include unit tests, UI tests, and we can choose to include core data. And when we include core data, we can also choose whether we want to use CloudKit or not, but that's uh, a different subject for a different video. Uh, so just by including this checkbox here, use core data, core data is going to get added to our application. Uh, I should call this data demo. The first thing to notice about an application that's got core data enabled is that there's this XC data model file that has the same name as the application followed by XC data model. And if we click on this, we actually get a different view in Xcode where we can create entities and some other things here. The entities are the thing we care about most when we're building an app with core data. These are the objects that are gonna appear in our application. They're the nouns of our application. They're gonna be the tables that actually persist the data in the database. So if I had an application that wanted to store data about cats, for example, I can click this add entity button that creates a brand new entity up here. Uh, and then I'll just rename this to be cat. And over here, I can give it some attributes. So maybe a cat has a name and maybe a cat has an age. And this will translate directly to a Swift class in our application. So I'll have a cat class that has a name property that's a string and an age property that's an integer. And then in the app, we'll be able to create an instance of cat and then tell core data to save it. And when it does that, it'll end up saving it into a database somewhere so that we can retrieve that data later on. But in our Swift application, we're just gonna be dealing with a cat class and cat objects, which is gonna feel really normal to a Swift application. And by default, core data is going to persist all of this data in a SQL light database. So we will actually end up with a table that represents each of these cat entities. And we don't have to worry about SQL, we don't have to worry about the database at all. Uh, core data is gonna take care of all of that for us. But if we were to look behind the scenes of what core data is actually doing, we will end up with a cat table that has an age column and a name column. But again, we don't think about that when we're dealing with core data. We just create entities and attributes and we just kind of live in this area, not worrying about exactly how the data is persisted. But when we're dealing with the attributes, we do have to think a little bit about how the data is going to be persisted. Because right here, uh, I have the name attribute that I'm just going to say is going to be a string and that's fine. But the age attribute is going to be an integer but I have these different options for integers. I have integer 16, 32, and 64, and this is the size of the integer, 16 bits, 32 bits, or 64 bits. Uh, and in my application, I usually wouldn't think too much about this. I'd just create an int, and that's gonna be the word size, which is probably gonna be 64 bits. But it doesn't really matter too much because it's just gonna be stored in memory and it's uh, a small amount of data. But when we're storing this to a database, we wanna choose the smallest integer that will represent our value accurately, because if we create thousands or hundreds of thousands of cats, we wanna be able to save the amount of data that we're actually using up on disk. So in this case, an integer 16 is more than enough to represent the age of a cat. So I'm gonna choose that, but it's something to think about. You're gonna, you're gonna think about these a little bit differently uh, when you're dealing with core data. Um, and then over here on the right, we have the attributes inspector, where we can modify uh, some of the attributes of each attribute. So here I have the age, uh, it's an integer. Um, I'm gonna say that this is non-optional. So every single cat must have an age. Uh, and if we try to save a cat that doesn't have an age, we'll just give it a default value. Maybe we'll say it's one, that's fine. Um, and then we'll use scalar types. Uh, that just means it's gonna use an integer and not a, an NS number. Um, and then for name string, I'm going to again say that this cannot be optional, uh, but I'm not gonna give a default name here. So there just has to be a name given to the cat in order for it to be saved. And if we don't give it a name, uh, then core data will complain. So we can set up even more things we can validate here, like how long the string, actually, let's do that. Let's, let's set the minimum length. Uh, a name must be at least one character long. 
Um, I don't think that can be a maximum length, that's fine. Uh, we could have regular expressions to verify things, like we could validate as an email address or some other things like that. Um, so it is good to fill out this information here because then core data will validate that your data is correct before it actually gets persisted to the database, which can be really, uh, really handy. And I'll leave more details about this stuff in the description of the video. So the XC data model is where we define our entities. In our application, this is going to translate to a Swift class with the attributes being properties on that class. And then behind the scenes, this is going to translate to a table in a SQLite database. Core Data is going to manage all of the complexities of this for us. All we have to do is create instances of a cat object and then tell Core Data to save it for us. And this is one of the huge benefits of using Core Data. All of the messy database logic gets abstracted away from us and we just get to use Swift classes and objects in our code. So before we go creating some cats in our application, I'm going to open up the app delegate and scroll to the bottom because when we create our application with that core data checkbox checked, we also get all of this code at the bottom here. You can see it's marked as core data stack and core data saving support. So all of this code comes, uh, it's basically just boilerplate core data code, comes with the app when we check that checkbox. And we need to use this code to actually interact with our core data objects. There's a property called persistent container that is a type of NS persistent container. And this is created with the name of the XC data model. So whatever name we have here, we have to put in here. And this sets up what's known as the core data stack. And the details of the core data stack are somewhat complex and it's not completely necessary to understand it all to start using core data. So I'm not gonna cover the core data stack in detail here, but I'll leave more details in the description if you're curious about that. But basically we create a persistent container and then we use this container to interact with our core data objects. And since the app delegate is a singleton, let's say we wanted to start interacting with core data objects from our view controller, uh, we could write something like. So we can get the app delegate from the current application and then from the app delegate we can get the persistent container. But what I really care about is something called an NS managed object context and the persistent container has an instance of an NS managed object context called the view context. So I'm just going to store that in a variable because this is the thing we care about the most, the context. The context is responsible for creating, reading, updating, deleting objects in core data and it does way more than just that as well so it's a really powerful object in core data and every time we do something we're going to be doing it through the context and when we set up that persistent container we get a view context created for us as well and this is an ns managed object context that we don't have to create ourselves because we can create our own but this is one that just runs on the main thread. That's why it's called view context. Uh, and if we use this, our application will just work. And then later on, when we get more advanced with core data, we can create our own context. We can run them on different threads. But for now, this is all we need. We need to have a context. The context is super important uh, and we can get it from the app delegate just like this. So now that we have the context, we can actually start interacting with our objects. And this is called an NS managed object context because every object in our XC data model is actually an NS managed object. So let's say I create a new cat, uh, I'll call it mittens, uh, and I have to pass in the context to the constructor here. Uh, and notice that I didn't actually have to create a cat class, that just gets created for me. And sometimes Xcode will complain a little bit about this, uh, so you can just uh, clean the build folder and try rebuilding the application. Um, or if it's still, oh no, it succeeded. So the build succeeded, but I'm still getting this uh, unresolved identifier cat here. Sometimes you just have to ignore the error messages. And if the error message uh, persisted, you can come into the XC data model uh, and open up the attributes inspector here and go to code gen and class definition is what you want to be selected But sometimes if you just select something else and then select class definition again That can get rid of the weird errors that Xcode will give you so I still have those warnings even though it's actually working I'm just gonna ignore them um, So I have my mittens object that is an instance of the cat class and every time we create an instance of an NS managed object We uh, do it through the context. So we pass the context in the construct here and we're basically telling the context hey can you create an instance of cat for us and 
like I said, context is this really powerful object that is going to basically do everything for us. We're not going to create the cat ourselves. We're going to get the context to do it for us. So keep it in mind that anytime we do something, we're actually going to get the context to do it for us. Uh, so once I have this object created, I can set its name, uh, let's say mittens, uh, and I'll set mittens' age to be, I don't know, two. Um, and now I have a cat object and nothing's going to happen in my application. I don't have any UI set up uh, and I also haven't saved this, so it's not going to get persisted. But here, this should be really familiar, right? I'm just creating an instance of a class, assigning some properties, uh, and that's basically it. And I can do this uh, as many times as I want. So if I just copy and paste this code, I'm going to create a new cat called kitten uh, and kitten is five. And I can just keep creating as many instances of this cat as I want to. Uh, but nothing's getting saved right now. I'm just creating the objects through the context. When I want to do anything, save an object, uh, I could undo the creation of the objects, whatever it is, I do it through the context. So context has a method called save uh, that can throw an error. Uh, and there's actually a convenience method on the app delegate right here that will actually check if anything has changed and then try to do that save for us uh, and then notify us if anything goes wrong here. So instead of calling save directly on the context, I'm just gonna do it on the app delegate just because that method's already existed. So if I do that, if I run the application now, I didn't actually change these to all be kitten. Okay, so now if I run this application, uh, these cats will get created from the context and then they'll get saved, which means they'll actually get persisted into the database. But I don't have any UI on the screen to represent this and we won't get any messages logged out to the console. So how can we test that this actually worked? Well, we could query core data for our cat objects and see which ones have been saved. So I'm gonna comment out all of this code while we do a query. And to query uh, objects in core data, we create something called a fetch request. So I'm gonna call this uh, cat fetch. Uh, and then on the cat class, there is something called fetch request. Uh, and the way this works, I actually need to specify the type here. So this is an ns fetch request but this won't actually work because I haven't imported core data. It doesn't know what an NSFetch request is. So at the moment that you start using the core data types directly like this, you are gonna have to import core data. Uh, so let's just import core data up here. This is the framework. Uh, and now I can use NSFetch request and I have to say that this is a fetch request to get cats. And what a fetch request will do is it will take a specific type like cat in this case, and it will return an array of that type uh, based on some sort of criteria. So I could say, give me all of the cats, or I could say, give me only cats that are uh, above the age of three or something like that. Uh, right now, we're just going to do a really simple fetch request. So I'm just going to say, give me all the cats. And then I need to actually perform the fetch. And like I said, I'll say it a hundred times the context does everything with the object. So we don't actually perform the fetch request. We ask the context to do it for us. So context uh, fetch our fetch request. So this is the cat fetch request. And the context will now return us an array of cats or it will throw an error if something goes wrong. So what we're gonna have to do here is actually put this in a uh, do try catch block. So now if we run this application, we're going to create the fetch request, we're going to execute that fetch request, and we should end up with an array of all of the cats, every single cat that's ever been saved to core data. So right now that should be mittens and kitten. So if I run this application, I've missed, ah, missed a closing curly brace. Now if I run the application, we should see printed out here, there we go, an array of the cats. So I'm just going to make this bigger. There we go. And this doesn't read super well, so I'm actually gonna do one more thing here. Uh, I'm going to loop through the cats, because again, this is just an array of cat objects. Uh, and then as we're doing that, let's print uh, the cat's name and the cat's age. And then rerun this. And the name is optional because the object has to be created without a name, it has to be created with a context constructor, um, but core data would throw an error if we tried to save an object without a name. Uh, so I might just force unwrap this because I know that they all have names when they're coming out of core data. Um, so there we go, we have mittens and kitten. And 
these are coming from a database somewhere. They are being persisted on the device somewhere. So I can close the app, I can come back later, I can keep saving data and it will always be there until I delete it or modify it somehow. And modifying this is actually really easy. Let's say I wanted to uh, give each cat a birthday. So I'm gonna say the cat's age has just incremented by one. Uh, as long as I at some point save that data, so I'm gonna save the current context, um, because these cats came from that context and I'm saving that context, these ages will now be incremented. So if I get rid of the save, get rid of the plus one, they will now be three and six. They're, they're saved like that forever until I modify that or delete that. And if I wanted to, I could tell the context to delete the cats, but I just feel bad deleting cats, so I'm not gonna do that. But those are the basic CRUD operations that you can perform with core data. So now that we understand how to do that in a brand new application, I wanna add core data to an existing application to persist some real objects that are gonna appear on my actual iPhone app. And that's what I'm gonna be covering in my next video, so make sure you check that out.